Understanding how to use your tools properly is critical to good woodworking. And in the past, we've done some deep dives into essential sanding skills. But this time, I just want to focus on some of the most useful tips that I've employed over the years, which I believe can have the biggest impact on your next project. One of the best sanding tips Ever is to use a pencil to help you judge your progress through the grits. Now this means lightly scribbling on the surface of your work, then sanding off that line. When the line's gone, you know it's time to move on to the next grit. Now keep in mind, this tip is best for finished sanding. If you're using 40 or 60 grit on a rough surface, you're probably going to need to remove more material than just the pencil line. But at those levels, you can usually tell by eye when you're ready to advance grits. The pencil trick is for the next grit, such as 80 and above, when your progress is more difficult to judge by eye alone. I often see tip videos that show how to use a piece of paper or cardboard to keep the sander from marring a perpendicular surface when you're sanding into a corner. A better solution is to simply sand your project parts before you assemble them. It is so much easier to work that way. Maybe there are occasions when you have to sand after assembly, such as when cleaning up some glue squeeze out or in some really small assemblies, but that can usually be done by hand. Just because you have a 5 inch orbital sander doesn't mean you have to use it for everything. In fact, you should always complete your project by hand with your finest grit. You work with the grain and that eliminates any cross grain scratches that may have been left behind by the orbital sander. So to that end, get yourself one of these. It's a comfortable foam sanding block that accepts the same sanding discs as your power tool so you don't have to get separate paper. I'll pin a link to the one I use to the top of the comment section below. Get one. It's inexpensive and it'll be one of the handiest sanding tools in your shop. I don't worry too much about slightly rounding over the edges of most projects because I usually ease the sharp edges by hand during my final sanding anyway but sometimes you do need some parts to stay nice and crisp at the edges. And the soft pad on a random orbit sander can round those over. If this is a concern for your project, you should avoid letting more than just a little bit of the disc hang off the edge of a workpiece. Or you might lay a second piece of the same thickness right next to your work to support the sander and keep everything flat and even. Sandpaper works by abrading away the surface until all the remaining scratches or imperfections are no deeper than the size of the grit on the paper. Skipping grits then won't speed up your work or save you money because the finer grit will just have to work harder. It's much easier, for example, to remove 80 grit scratches with 120 grit paper than it is with 180 grit paper. So as a rule, it's best to jump your grit size no more than 50% at a time. That means go from 80 to 120, and then from 120 to 180, and so on. And know when to stop. A couple coats of a film finish, like polyurethane, will fill in 180 grit scratches. So sanding much higher than that may be a waste of time in that case. On the other hand, a penetrating finish, like oil or something that soaks in more and doesn't build up a thick film on the surface, that may require finer sanding, perhaps 220 or 320 or even higher. Believe it or not, cheap sandpaper is actually pretty expensive because it works more slowly and it wears out faster. Maybe you have a favorite sandpaper, and if you do, that's great. But if not, I think you should at least try a pack of the sandpaper I use. It's the 3M Cubitron. Too. I like the mesh version, but it also comes in a multi-hole version that'll work with any sand or hole pattern. I'll pin a link to the top of the comment section below. Seriously, this stuff is different. It's going to cut faster and last longer than any paper you've tried, which actually makes it perhaps the least expensive sandpaper on the market. Try it, you'll thank me later. It's a bad idea to start your sander in the air before you set it down on the workpiece. And I say that knowing that I myself do this all the time. But it is a bad idea because many lower end sanders need resistance to keep them from spinning up too quickly and potentially damaging their bearings. But the biggest problem with starting up off the workpiece, even with a high quality sander, is when you do set it down, you can do so unevenly and you can end up putting a deep scratch in the surface of the project with the edge of the disc. Depending on the quality of your random orbit sander, it may vibrate a little bit or it may vibrate a lot. 
Some folks are really sensitive to those vibrations, especially over time. They can cause temporary numbness or even permanent nerve damage in some extreme cases. If the vibrations bother you, or if you often sand for extended periods and you don't want to take any risks, get yourself some anti-vibration gloves. I'll link to a good pair below this video. I like the fingerless ones and the goatskin palms, and there's a gel pad inside that's just enough to make sanding more comfortable without being too bulky. A lot of people think if they push down harder with their sander, it's gonna work faster. And sure, if you really hog down on the edge, you can sand the heck out of a little spot. But you're causing an uneven surface, and it's gonna stand out like a sore thumb when you put your finish on. Applying too much pressure also interrupts the tool's random orbit pattern. It reduces it to just simply vibrating. Try this. Put a mark on the edge of a sanding disc and watch how its movement changes when you apply excessive downward force. This is gonna quickly wear out your sandpaper and it could prematurely kill your sander. Not to mention, it will cause those nasty pigtail swirls that are common to the vibrating sanders. You bought a random orbit sander, not a vibrating sander. You wanted that randomized motion and superior finish, so don't interrupt it by applying too much force. Another mistake common to impatient woodworkers is to move the sander too quickly. This alters the sander's scratch pattern. It's designed to create tight, continuously overlapping swirls that blend together and become impossible to see. When you move it too quickly, you stretch the scratch pattern out into longer, more noticeable swirls. You aren't scrubbing the wood, you're sanding it. About an inch of movement per second is pretty much ideal. If you have to keep going back over the same spot, you just have to switch to a coarser grit. One thing you should not slow down is the variable speed dial on your sander. I made a whole video about this some time ago, but here's the short version. Single speed sanders are designed to run at the optimal speed for the sandpaper, which is 10 to 12,000 RPM. That also happens to be the top setting on variable speed models. They are actually designed to be run at that full speed most of the time. The purpose of the dial is to slow things down for specific applications such as when you're using very coarse grits on veneered surfaces and you don't want to go through, or when you're sanding between coats of finish. Most of the time, full speed is the best setting, and if you aren't applying too much downward force, full speed is not going to overheat good quality sandpaper. Modern sanders often come with all sorts of gimmicky dust filters and bags, and they promise to clean the air. It's mostly nonsense. There's a reason why professional sanders like this one don't come with a dust bag. Pros know that dust bags don't work. You need a shop vacuum or a dust extractor to pull the dust off the surface of the wood while you work. Collecting that fine dust isn't just about avoiding dust booger buildup in your nose. It's also about improving the quality of the finish because fine dust and even loose bits of grit from the sandpaper can form into little lumps beneath the tool and leave deeper scratches and swirls. You have to suck that stuff up as you work. So I don't care what sander you use, cheap or expensive, you should toss the filter bag and at least attach a shop vacuum. The pad on the bottom of your sander is covered with little plastic hooks that connect to the tiny loops of your sanding disc. You should take care of these if you want your sander to have a long life. One way to do that is to store your sander with the sanding disc on it to help keep the hooks from getting smashed down. And consider getting one of these. It's called a hook it. One side has loops that attach to your sander's pad. The other side has hooks that attach to your paper. Now the wear is on the easily replaceable hook it pad instead of the sander itself. It's universal for pretty much any sander, I'll link to the one I use at the top of the comments below as well. It's one of the best $6 purchases you will ever make. I hope these tips help you next time you get out your random orbit sander, and I'll see you next time. We use blade guards and push sticks and safety glasses and hearing protection to keep us safe because we want to enjoy this craft for many years to come. But what about our lungs? I like Trend Stealth masks because they have silicone bodies that fully seal on my face. This is important to me because a leaky mask is a useless mask. The original Stealth features a compact size, easily adjustable dual straps for a proper fit on your face, a downward facing exhale valve that won't fog your glasses, and replaceable N100 filters. 
The Stealth Light looks like an ordinary disposable mask, but it features the same silicone seals, an advanced head strap system, and a downward facing exhale valve. The 0.3 micron filter is replaceable as well. I switched to Trend Stealth masks for my dusty work a couple years ago because they offer the advanced protection of a larger canister respirator in a less cumbersome size that's comfortable to wear all day long. Check them out at the link below the video.